Welcome to American Dragon Presents Chinese Medicine in America. My name is Joel Penner. I'm a doctor of oriental medicine, an acupuncturist, and a Chinese herbalist. I'm also co-author of the textbook Zhang Fu Syndrome's Differential Diagnosis and Treatment. In this episode, we will examine the pathologies associated with blood and jing. We will start with the vital substance blood. Blood is a form of qi which is very dense in material. Blood is inseparable from qi. Qi infuses life into blood and is called the commander of blood, while blood is called the mother of qi. Blood is generated by the interaction of post-heaven or post-natal qi of the stomach and spleen, called gu qi, and pre-heaven or prenatal qi in the kidneys. The main function of blood is to nourish the body and it complements the nourishing action of qi. Blood is a dense form of qi and flows all over the body. Blood moistens the tissues and provides the material foundation for the mind or shen. Blood excess manifests as blood stagnation or blood heat, while blood deficiency exists as blood deficiency or blood loss. We will start with blood excess conditions. The first is blood stagnation. Blood stagnation signs and symptoms can come from five separate syndromes. The first is qi stagnation, which is the most common. Qi is the commander of blood. If qi stagnates, blood will eventually stagnate. The second is qi deficiency. If qi is too weak to move, again qi stagnates. And if qi stagnates, blood will eventually stagnate. The third is blood heat. Heat in the blood may cause the blood to congeal and stagnate. The fourth is blood deficiency. Over time, blood deficiency can cause qi deficiency. If qi is too weak, it stagnates. Again, if qi stagnates, blood will eventually stagnate. And the final syndrome is internal cold. Cold slows blood circulation. The general signs and symptoms of blood stagnation are a dark complexion, purple lips, boring, fixed, stabbing pain, which is a primary symptom, abdominal masses that do not move, purple nails, bleeding with dark blood and dark clots, a purple tongue, and a choppy or wiry firm pulse. The organs affected by blood stagnation are the liver, heart, lungs, stomach, intestines, and uterus. The signs and symptoms associated with liver blood stagnation are dizziness, numbness, poor vision, depression, lack of initiative, purple nails, a dark face, painful menstruation, dark menstrual blood with dark clots, amenorrhea, scanty periods, premenstrual pain, a purplish tongue, especially on the edges, and a choppy or wiry firm pulse. The signs and symptoms associated with heart blood stagnation are purple lips, stabbing or pricking pain in the chest, stuffiness in the chest, a purple tongue on the sides towards the front, purple distended veins under the tongue, and a choppy or knotted pulse. Signs and symptoms associated with lung blood stagnation are stuffiness in the chest, coughing up dark blood, a purple tongue on the front or the central sides, and purple distended veins under the tongue. Signs and symptoms associated with stomach blood stagnation are epigastric pain, vomiting dark blood, dark blood in the stools, and a purple tongue in the center. Signs and symptoms associated with intestinal blood stagnation are severe abdominal pain and dark blood in the stools. And finally, 
The signs and symptoms associated with uterine blood stagnation are dysmenorrhea, premenstrual pain, dark menstrual blood with clots, amenorrhea, abdominal masses, and a purple tongue. The second excess blood condition is blood heat. Heat in the blood may cause blood to congeal and stagnate. Blood heat arises from external heat affecting the pericardium and can become chronic if the heat is unexpelled and lingers in the blood. This is described in detail in the Wen Bing, which, as was mentioned in Diagnosis Part 2, is part of Shang Han Lun Wen Bing Diagnosis. Also, as mentioned before, these notes are available for $25 by contacting me at joel at americandragon.com. The general signs and symptoms of blood heat are a general feeling of heat, skin problems with red eruptions, a dry mouth, a red tongue and a rapid pulse. If heart blood has heat, there will also be anxiety, mouth ulcers, and mental illness including schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. If liver blood has heat, there will be skin problems characterized by itching, heat, and redness. If the uterus and the chong or penetrating channel are affected by blood heat, there will be excessive blood loss during menstruation. The deficiency pathologies associated with blood are blood deficiency and blood loss, which is one cause of blood deficiency. Blood deficiency usually arises from spleen chi deficiency because spleen chi initiates the first step in blood production. Blood deficiency affects the liver and heart. Heart blood deficiency signs and symptoms are a pale or sallow complexion, pale lips, poor memory, insomnia, anxiety, and a pale, slightly dry tongue. Liver blood deficiency signs and symptoms are dizziness, numbness, poor or blurred vision, depression, a lack of initiative, amenorrhea or scanty periods, and a thready or choppy pulse. In long-standing cases, blood deficiency can lead to pronounced dryness with a very dry tongue, dry skin, dry hair, and withered nails. In very severe cases, blood dryness can lead to liver wind manifesting as itchy skin diseases. Blood loss can arise from deficient qi which is unable to hold blood in the vessels, blood heat, blood stagnation, yin deficiency, or trauma. Blood loss can manifest as epistaxis, which is nose bleeding, hematemesis, vomiting blood, hemoptysis, coughing up blood, melena, which is dark sticky feces containing partly digested blood, menorrhagia, which is excessive menstruation, metrorrhagia, which is non-menstrual uterine bleeding, hematuria, blood in the urine, and hemophysia, which is fresh blood in the stool. The next vital substance we will discuss is Jing, or vital essence. Jing is the organic substance which forms the basis for growth, reproduction, and development. It controls the cyclic functioning of the individual from conception to death, including conception, birth, growth, maturation, decline, and death. In children, it controls the growth and development of bones, teeth, hair, brain, and sexual maturation. After puberty, it controls reproductive functions and fertility. Women's Jing flows in seven-year cycles, and men's Jing flows in eight-year cycles. We can see, especially in adolescence, that 14-year-old girls and 16-year-old boys are more emotionally and physically equal. Preheaven or prenatal jing is not easily influenced after birth, but can be positively affected, but not quantitatively increased, by a balanced lifestyle, restraint in sexual activity, a balanced diet, and healthy exercise, including Tai Chi and Qigong. Lifestyle excesses diminish preheaven jing. 
post-heaven jing or post-natal jing is refined and extracted from food and drink after birth. Kidney jing is a specific energy which plays an extremely important role in human physiology. It is derived from both pre-heaven and post-heaven jing. Like pre-heaven jing, it is hereditary energy which determines a person's constitution. Again, equivalent to DNA. Unlike pre-heaven jing, it interacts with post-heaven jing and is replenished by it. It is stored in the kidneys, but having a fluid nature, it circulates throughout the body, particularly in the eight extraordinary meridians. Kidney jing determines reproduction, conception and pregnancy, growth, development, and sexual maturation. Jing produces marrow. The concept of marrow in Chinese medicine is different from that in Western medicine and is not simply bone marrow. Marrow in turn produces bone marrow and fills the spinal cord and the brain. This marrow is the common matrix of the bone marrow, the spinal cord, and the brain and has no equivalent in Western medicine. The brain is called the sea of marrow. If Jing is weak, the brain may lack nourishment and the patient may suffer from lack of concentration, poor memory, dizziness, and an empty feeling in the head. Jing is the basis of constitutional strength and resistance to external pathogenic factors. Wei Qi, or defensive Qi, which is primarily responsible for resistance to external pathogenic factors, draws its strength and has its root in kidney Jing. It is said that if Jing is properly stored and not dissipated, no febrile disease can be contracted. Jing and Qi are considered to be the material foundation of the mind spirit called Shen. If Jing and Qi are healthy and flourishing, the Shen will be happy, leading to a happy, healthy life. If Jing and Qi are depleted, the Shen will suffer. A healthy shen depends on jing, which is stored in the kidneys, and qi, which is produced by the spleen and stomach. Therefore, shen is dependent on pre-heaven and post-heaven jing. The symptoms of jing deficiency are stunted growth, poor bone development, infertility, habitual miscarriage, bone deterioration, loose teeth, hair loss, premature graying of the hair, poor sexual function, impotence, weakness of the knees, nocturnal emissions, tinnitus, deafness, poor concentration, poor memory, dizziness, a feeling of emptiness in the head, constantly prone to colds and influenza, prone to allergies, and chronic rhinitis. Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. If you have any questions, please contact me at joel at americandragon.com. In our next episode, we will finish our introduction to diagnosis by looking at the vital substance body fluids and its pathological extension, phlegm. I'll see you then.